unto your people that we're able to come before your throne to bow yes. down and say thank you. Thank you, thank you for you last Lord. night's sleep and rest. Hallelujah. Thank you for protection. Thank you. thank you for grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Thank you for the sacrifice of your only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord, how you brought us out. Thank you, God, even now. Those who bound the hands of the enemy. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for liberty. Even now, God, thank you for your watching. God, we come today, God, and thank you for the food on the table, the clothes on our back. Thank you for all that thou hast granted and given again to God. We owe you our everything. And even so, Lord, we thank you, God, as we consider, Lord, the work that you've done. God, you saved my soul. Thank you today, God. And we thank you, God, because you gave us the victory over death, hell, and the grave. Thank you today for a brand of a, a brand new life. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit. Thank you today, God. You are very present help. Even in trouble, all that we will ever need, all that we can ever have is found in Jesus. And we thank you, God, today. Thank you, God, for giving us the mind again to come. Thank you, God, for reaching out again. Yes, Lord. I need your help. I need your strength. I need you to deliver. I need a credit to the people. I need your authority in the name of Jesus. I need you to help God again. Somebody is drifting, God. Somebody is the burden of giving up. Somebody is confused, oh God. But even now, oh God, thank you again okay today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I love this congregation. Oh, but look on Brother Lassiter. In the name of Jesus, whatever the need, God, whatever the situation, God, yes, Lord, the Lord is upon your name. Lord, send our deliverer. In the name of Jesus, you know every need. Yes, Lord, today, and we call by faith, God, saying it is so, and so it is, oh God. Yes, Lord, thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for the covenant. In the name of Jesus, in the Simmons family, yes, Lord, you I see everything, you know everything, and even now, Lord, you told by faith, God, to thank you today, God, for the healing virgin, thank you, thank God, for bringing us out, God, thank you, God, even now, Lord, see my situation, yes, Lord, oh, my God, today, thank you today, God. Blessing our mother, those that are with us, those who are handicapped somewhat. Yes, Lord, Mother Parker today, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God, thank you today. In the name of Jesus. Whatever they need. Hallelujah. Whatever they need. Yes, Lord. Help us again today. Yes, Lord. Trust in the name of Jesus. You know everything, Lord. You know how to deliver. You know when to deliver. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let us not be ashamed of God. Let us not hold back our praise, God. And all the glory and all the praise, God. Our thanksgiving, God, it belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. Have you waited today? Have you waited in this ceremony? Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you today, God. Yes, Lord. My situation, God. You know, Lord. Yes, Lord.
actions we believe that the perpetual word of prayer of the righteous are being met. So woman, you are healed. Man, you are delivered. Son, you are set free. starting with the first. Uh -huh. And he spake a parable unto them uh -huh. to this end that men ought always to pray yes, yes. and not to faint. Uh -huh. saying, there, saying there was a, in a city a judge uh -huh. which feared not God yeah. neither regarded man yeah. and there was a widow yeah. in that city and uh -huh. she came unto him saying avenge me yeah. of my adversary. Yeah. And he would not for a while but afterwards, he said within himself, Don't I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming, she wearied me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And she and shall not God avenge yeah. his own elect, yeah. which cry day and night unto oh, him, oh, though oh, he oh, bear oh, long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Glory yeah. be to the word of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, ask the Lord. Praise everybody. Hallelujah. God bless Business, and we believe God that God is already yes, working it out. You may be seated in the sanctuary. We just thank thankful and grateful for what the Lord has done. He has brought us back yeah. one more time into yeah. the sanctuary. Yeah. Into the yeah. gates with thanksgiving and yeah. into his court with praise. Yeah. Be thankful unto yes, him and bless his name. Yeah. For the Lord is good. Yeah. For the Lord is good. Yeah. His mercy is everlasting and is true. And do it to all generations. We thank God for how He has brought us and what He's done for us, yeah. and how He's kept us all down through these months and weeks. Nobody yes, but the Lord. We don't take any of the credit. Amen. 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 But we give God the glory. We give God the glory. God is worthy of our praise. Yeah. We do admonish you that to continue to like and to share as we go forth in the service on today. Amen. And we're asking you to come and to come before his presence with thanksgiving and with singing. And as we come and give God the thanks and thank God for what he's done and what he's going to do. And we appreciate all of you that carried on for us while we were away. But thank God that we're back. And we're, I'm still feeling the after effects. Amen. There's still rumblings and tremors going on. Y'all know when an earthquake takes place and all of this and after effects and after tremors that take place. After the anointing of the Holy Ghost. is still moving by the Spirit. And we encourage you to come and be a part of what God is doing yeah. in this last day. The enemy trying to trick and bamboozle us and try to make us miss out on what God has for us. But come before him. Come before him with singing. Yes, but oftentimes we don't take that opportunity. But I admonish you today, take the opportunity to take a little time, somebody sit and glorify the Lord. We ask that you would be a part of any and all of our services here at the church. We do have our Tuesday night Bible study. 
that's still in effect at 7.30 and good. Thanking God for the lessons that have been taught down through these weeks. Of course, we've been uh, doing it through the Loom session, but this coming Tuesday night, y'all can make day, this coming Tuesday night, we will be in house on this Tuesday night. Amen. So I'm admonishing all the saints and all of you that are out there that come and be a part of the Thanksgiving service that we're going to be having on this Tuesday tonight. It's a night of Thanksgiving. It's a day of Thanksgiving. And we ask everybody to come and be a part of it. Take the time out to put away some of the things that we call business as usual and take the time out. We won't be here all night long, but I believe somebody got a testimony. I believe somebody want to give God some show of praise. And as we come together in corporate worship on this Tuesday night at 7 30, we're looking for everybody to be a part. And those of members of the church, please come out and be a part of this service. And I know we haven't been having it on a regular basis, but we try to get back into the mode and into the atmosphere of coming back to church. I hear Jesus Moore say, let us go back to church. Amen. And the Lord will meet you here in this place. That's on Tuesday night. And every Friday, of course, Tuesday and Friday, we have our intercessory prayer ministry that takes place at 12 noon. Yeah. You can tune right into us. Go right to our webpage. Uh, that is www.hgocogic.com. And you can tune right into our Bible study and to our prayer intercessory prayer all over these United States and even into the foreign lands. We're able to communicate with our brothers and sisters. So we ask that you would do that on today. And we thank God for those of you that uh, participated even on yesterday. Uh, we had our feeding, of course, our, our community feeding. Uh, this is a part of the important things. Thank you for your contribution. Those of you that contributed something to the effort that was put forth and the giving, you know, Thanksgiving giveaway on yesterday, I believe that it was a tremendous success. And the Lord will bless you. And sometimes it's just that type of atmosphere. You feel better when you can bless somebody else. Because whether you believe it or not, somebody's always doing much worse than you are. And so that gives us a perspective on what God has done for us. And what a blessing it is to be able to pour into another person's life as the Lord continue to bless them. We appreciate you and thank God for all of those of you that have been supporting us during these months. And yes. I thank God for yes. your time and all three. Yes. Amen. Now, not everybody's not doing it, but we have a remnant of people that are doing it and have continued to do it without any provocation, but just knowing that it's the right thing to do. Look at somebody you've got to do what's right. Yeah, sometimes it takes a lot of pushing, a lot of pushing and browbeat. But that's not my manner. I believe folks, when they get saved and delivered, shown up, they're going to do what's right. Amen. And those of you that have been doing that down through these months, I appreciate it. My wife and I are in the ministry here yes. at the church because right. we could not be able to do what we're doing without your financial support. Amen. And it does help. M plus M equals M. Yes, we're not just within these four walls, but we have other things that we're doing outside of these four walls. But it does take money to do the ministry that the Lord has placed on our heart to be a blessing uh, to many persons that could not do for themselves. And yes. sometimes we're the voice for those persons that don't have a voice. Right. And God uses us in that capacity. We're continuing to pray that the Lord will continue to use us in these last and evil days. Amen. We appreciate that. What Michael Eden had carried on for us to preach the word of God from my Sunday. I enjoyed the service on last week, and it just was good to see you all carrying on in the presence of the Lord, and God is everywhere at the same time. So we just ask that you would continue to pray for us, and uh, we thank God for what he's doing. We have, uh, we thank God for all of our ministering brothers and sisters, all of our missionaries, and thank God for Reverend Jay, he's with us on today. We appreciate everything that the Lord has done. My birthday shout out. I don't have my list before, but I do know some November babies that we've already celebrated and got some more to go. Yeah. Amen. And brother uh, DJ Jordan has a birthday on this month. Don't know an exact date, but he had a birthday this yeah. month. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Brother Mason also Jordan had a birthday this month. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I know we've got some upcoming birthdays, and so the elder Michael Eaton uh, yeah. on the 25th of this month. Praise God. Sister Crystal Jefferson on the 30th of November. Come on, let's celebrate with these birthday babies. Hallelujah. God bless you with many, many more. And after you continue to pray for us.
Coast, and I like to do a shout out, and I've been forgetting it these last few Sundays to our South American brothers and yes, sisters, our uh, Afro Latino brothers and sisters, and we say K D O T and Diga, meaning yes. God bless you and God keep you. So she yes. said, she said, You didn't call my name. And I say, I called your name today. We hope we've been planning to see you next year. The Lord bless us to be able to travel to be a part of. Uh, what we're doing down in uh, Cartagena, uh, Colombia. We thank God for you. Come on, let's thank God for our brothers and sisters. I said to continue to keep them in your prayer. There is a hunger that goes out all over this world, knowing that Jesus is and sisters all over this world. I'm going to ask at this time as Brother uh, Ted, uh, Brother Ted would give us a selection. I didn't prepare him. Amen. But he's, he's normally right there on the spot. I appreciate this young man. He's an anointed young man. Amen. Yes, and I, was, I was just amazed, Brother Jefferson, we thank God for you, but I was amazed to see the young people come forth even during our convocation on last week in Memphis, Tennessee. I said, God is raising up a group of people that, that's not carried about by the, the, the society and what, what's going on in and around them, but I believe God is anointing certain ones that are carry out the work of the ministry, and as they continue to preach and to sing and to minister to the people of God, God, I said, God continue to use them and whatever way you see fit. So he's going to come at this time and give us a selection, and I'll be back uh, with the word from the Lord. Let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to be back in the house of the Lord once again. And um, I'm going to sing this song that uh, Pastor and us, who was originally going to sing, it says, Great Jehovah, we praise you. Come on, everybody sing it. Oh,
has seen the enemy has lulled to sleep many of the people of God. And we don't act like we know what time it is. Oh my God. And that's something yeah. the young children now say, you don't know what, you know what time it is. Uh -huh. And we as God's people ought to know what time it is. Yeah. But the word redeem means to buy back. Uh -huh. The wasted time that has been spent over the last few years. Paul understood that God made us stewards over our most irrepressible, irreplaceable possession, and that is our time. Right. We cannot replace time, but we can make the best of the time that we have left. And we are to be good stewards of our time, yes. using it wisely and constructively and in worship and service to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I think we need to put more of an emphasis on that. Um, and, and as we evaluate our lives, people of God, for this last few months of this year and what we've done and what we haven't done and how most of our lives have changed in one way uh, or the other, yeah. amen, some for the better and others for the worse. Yeah. And I might as well tell the whole truth, amen. amen. And if we were to be perfectly honest with ourselves, we all can do better. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, we can do better. You know, we're better than this. But that there is a spirit that exists. Yeah. And we keep trying to remind people there is a spirit that exists that has ca captivated the mind of a lot of people uh -huh. in this last day. Uh -huh. But better comes from with effort. We can do better, but it's going to take some effort. Y'all yeah. say amen if you can. Yeah. And that is what sometimes makes the difference between success and failure. You see most people that are successful, they are putting forth some type of effort. Oh that didn't necessarily fall out the sky, but they had to put forth an effort. We used to put it this way in the old times, that God helped those who helped themselves. Right. But in this last day, there seems to be a spirit that has overwhelmed those that should really be trying to help themselves. Amen. We all have work to do. Tell your neighbor, I've got work to do. Got work to do. And now that we have uh, taken a break, so to speak, uh, from working in the church, it's time to go to work. Recess is over. I heard you, Bishop. I heard you say, recess is over. Hallelujah. God has brought us through some very difficult times. And we give him the glory and all the praise. Yes. Like we say, in all the glory belongs to him. Amen. But as the opening message from our Holy Convocation reminded us that recess is over. Uh -huh. I am reminded of my school days when the bell would ring for us to go outside and play. Uh -huh. Put some physical activities and get a light snack while we were out from the regular classroom. Uh -huh. Recess is a general term for a period in which a group of people or a person is temporarily dismissed from their duties. Y'all following me? It is, a, it is a regularly scheduled period in the school day uh, to have fun and to socialize with your friends. But some folk get in trouble during recess. I know I did. Hallelujah. And fights break out during recess. Uh, and we used to play hide and go seek doing, y'all don't know nothing about that. Oh, yes, used to play hide and go seek doing recess. Yes, uh, we used to play spin the bottle uh -huh. yes, doing recess. Y'all, somebody, somebody know what I'm talking about. And, and because we wanted to sneak a kiss here and there, we used to get a, a bottle. Y'all don't know nothing, y'all. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We used to get a bottle because we either looked across the classroom and saw a little honey or a mister that we kind of took a special interest in. So we would take a bottle out, y'all don't hear me the right. way, and spin that thing around. And whoever it landed on, we were to get a kid. That happened doing what? Recess. Glory to God. And, and we used to wrestle. And sometimes those wrestles turn into the real thing. Doing what? Recess. All sorts of things happen doing and took place doing recess. Yeah. Some of the saints have been on a recess oh for quite some time. Now. Oh Sometimes they stop paying the tithe. They in what? Recess. recess. Mm -hmm. Stop coming to church because they're in recess. recess. Mm -hmm. Stop witnessing to people because after all, I'm on a break. Oh my God. I'm on recess. Stop inviting folk to church. Y'all ain't gonna like this part today. But I'm just talking about those that are on recess. And everybody not on recess. 
Let me put that out there. But there are a lot of people that are on recess. Stop participating in any church functions or activity because after all, I'm on recess. recess. Ask somebody, are you still on recess? The way child is played. Oh Paul says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I behave as a child, paraphrasing it. But now that I become a man, amen, I'm going to act like a man or act like a grown person. And that's what we so desperately need in this last day. Because we have become so accustomed to being in this low period. But Paul says to redeem the time. Jesus is really soon to come. He's coming back. But it is a spirit, people of God that have captivated the folk and have allowed them to, to the enemy to convince them that they are okay. Oh my God. That this temple and the current level of disengagement. And this is the admonishment. And when the prophet came all the time during the Bible days, he didn't come with, he came with an admonishment to get back to God. Yes, sir. And his message was not all the time popular Amen. because a lot of the folk back then were on recess. recess. But this day, this temple, this current level of disengagement is they trying to, the devil trying to tell you that that's normal. Yeah. It's not normal. Right, that does not take all of that. It does take all of that. Amen. And I've been saying for quite some time that less time equals less influence. Yeah. And you don't have to really necessarily to, to stay married to be at home, but I tell you, the more that you stay away from home, it's going to affect your marriage. Yeah. I heard somebody say that the other day. It affects our relationship. Yeah. The more distance we put between the, our soul and our Savior, the less, the more influence we have that will be negative to the things of God. Y'all say amen if you can. Amen. Because I come to tell you today that God is still expecting you to be the examples in this last day. And not the excuses for anybody to uh, come necessarily desire the hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God. Don't stand in their way. All right. God is not excusing you from your duties. Amen. You're not. He didn't ring the bell for you to be on recess. All right. All right. like it is far too good. Right. Hallelujah. But you've got to engage yourself in ministry. Yes. And this is what we keep admonishing. Come on, let's get back to work. Let's get going. Let's do what we got to do. Yes. And I was so inspired on last week as I saw those persons putting forth the effort. And I know that we said, well, it's going to take all of that. But faith without works is dead. Right. And if I can't move in that direction, then I'm moving in an opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So don't allow this year to come to a close and you have not been attempted to break out of your recess mode. Right. It's time to go back to work. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, it's time to go back to work. It's time to go back to work. It's a trick. It's a trick that the enemy wants to hold you hostage. I heard you, Ella. Yes, Amen. Yes. Don't agree with him. He wants to hold you hostage. Yes. And he's going to cause you to lose out and miss out on what God yes. has planned for your life. Uh -huh. And whether we want to acknowledge it or not, Amen. Do, do, don't become a slave to the enemy's pack. Yes, right. Don't allow yourself to give in to his devices. Uh -huh. He tells you that you're too tired, that you should take a break, and especially on Sunday. Oh but he don't tell you to take no break when you're taking your vacation. Right. Uh -huh. He don't tell you to take no break when you're going to work. Yeah. He don't tell you to take no break nowhere else. But when it comes down to the church, uh -huh. he said, you need to take a break. Y'all don't like this hard. Yeah. Destroy right. your life. But Jesus came that you might have life and that more abundantly. Oh, yeah. The enemy will have you to be at ease in Zion. Mm -hmm. And I was reading an article the other day about a particular uh, coping mechanism that sometimes can be related to what we in the church experience. Y'all watch this. I was reading an article uh, because we deal with security and sometimes how that the spies can get a hold of a person that's in desperate need of money and that has some issues within their home and they can take advantage of that person and just offer them a little money and before you know it, they've sold all the government's own secrets. Wow. They've told them everything that needs to be told right. because right. they were in a desperate situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's called the Stockholm Syndrome. Y'all yeah. uh -huh. have to say the Stockholm Syndrome. What is the Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome is a coping mechanism that happens 
in a captive or abusive situation. And I know I'm saying things like that, but in real time, people can check you out. And I already know some of you are on your phone now, but it's okay. I want you to check me out because it has relevance to what I'm trying to get to today. There is a per There are people that have become hostage and they have taken on a coping mechanism called Stockholm Syndrome. I'm just going to use that for the sake of my argument today. Yeah. People develop feelings toward their captive or abusers over time. Yeah. And some folk have been in abusive situations, and we get used to the abuse. Oh my God. And we sympathize with the abuse. Sympathize with the abuser. This condition applies to situations involving child abuse, coach athlete abuse, relationship abuse, and sex trafficking. Yeah. Uh -huh. Stockholm Syndrome is not a physical, a psychological diagnosis. Yeah. Instead, it is a way of understanding some people's emotional responses toward a captor yeah. or an abuse. Y'all yeah. with me? Yeah. Sometimes people who are held prisoner or are subject to abuse can have feelings of sympathy uh -huh. or positive feeling toward the captor. Uh -huh. yeah. One famous case was in, in 1974. Many of you, some of y'all are too young to understand, know what happened was during that case of Patty Hearst. Come on, come on, the Sibonese Liberation yeah, Army yeah. kidnapped her. Yes, her dad was a rich newspaper yeah. owner, yeah. and she was the heir. Yeah. She renounced her family. Yeah. She adopted a new name. Oh and even join in her captors yeah. in Robin Banks. Mm -hmm. She was a victim with a Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. This famous criminology that named or coined this, uh, this situation, I won't give his name, explained the aftermath of a bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm giving you, I'm going somewhere with this. Wow. In 1973, after a six day standoff with the police, the hostages were released. Yeah. But the hostages had developed a strong emotional bond toward their captors yes. because they treated them kindly yes. and did not harm them physically. They, defend, they defended their captors and would and refused to testify against them, uh -huh. even though they held them hostage. Uh -huh. Look at somebody and say, don't defend the devil. Don't, don't defend the devil. devil. Don't let There's nothing wrong with the wearing of the masses, but we've allowed that to muzzle our Amen. prayers. Amen. We are agreeing with now that the pandemic has subsided, yet and still, I'm going to still hold to it because, after all, I wanted to hide from the world anyway. Mm. Oh, my God. And this was good. Yeah. Ooh, I felt cold spirit. But then this gave me a good excuse to continue to hide from the world. There are some safety precautions that we all must take. Uh -huh. But I'm saying prayer with precaution. Yeah, it yeah. should never be a point to have an enemy to steal our joy. He does not care about you. His uh -huh. ultimate goal is to have you to be with him in hell. Mm -hmm. So the enemy has held many persons hostage as yeah. we were talking last week and has caused them now to become bamboozled. Yeah. And it is a spirit, amen, that many have fallen into that have caused them to give up on God. Had called them to think, I don't really have to try. It's too hard. What are y'all going to church for? What are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. Why are we even doing this? After all, we don't really need to do any of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going and I'm going to tell you about it because folk believe that he is not involved. But the enemy is involved in that spirit. Yes, that caused you to feel comfortable and relaxed and at ease in Zion. And that exists now among so many church members. Yep, yep. A lot of folk have compromised with the enemy, especially now that the pandemic has subsided somewhat. Folks' attitude toward the church and its activities 
has changed. Y'all can say what you want, but I've seen it happen. That you go from this point now, you don't go up, but you go back. Wherever you've been supporting, you've been doing this and you've been doing that. And the less you have an opportunity to do that, the further back you get. And it's just a matter of time when you fall totally off the way. Y'all don't have to believe it anymore, but I've seen it happen before. And if this is in the testimony, I think this syndrome, this Stockholm Syndrome is working on behalf of psychologically many of the people of God. But I come to just remind you that recess is over. It's time to go to work. Awake thou that sleepeth, I just read, and arise and Christ will give thee light. The prophet Haggai, and that's what I want to go to this morning uh, for the next remaining moments. The prophet Haggai, uh, one of the minor prophets, had a situation that he was confronted with. Yes, Haggai, whose name means festive, had an opportunity to share with those returning Jews that had came out of the exile. Uh -huh. They came out of the exile with the very attitude of returning home to, back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Uh -huh. It reminds me of the situation where that now we're in after we've come through this the worst part of the pandemic. Now we're trying to return back to read the laws. They returned with that truth after this traumatic experience of 70 years. They returned to their homeland to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They started out well, All right. but then opposition arose uh -huh. and the construction ceased. Uh -huh. Haggai's assignment was to rally the troops together, All so right. to speak. And I want you to turn to the book of Haggai. It's right after Zephaniah uh -huh. and right before Zechariah in the Old Testament. Right. Amen. I know we don't go that way many times, but I right. think the prophet had something to say that relates to what we're dealing with right. right now. He had to rally the people to complete the task within five years. Uh -huh. He addresses three problems. And I want to read just for a few moments in the first chapter of Isaiah and verses 1 through 15. I won't call it, I won't read it in its entirety, but this prophet of God had a message. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, and to Zerubbabel, the son of Shittel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedet, the high priest, saying, mm -hmm. Thus speaketh the word of the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Mm -hmm. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste. All right. What a situation. Uh -huh. They're coming back for the sole purpose really to rebuild Jerusalem. Uh -huh. But now they have lost interest. And the prophet reminds them, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses right. and to this house lay waste? Uh -huh. Now therefore does saith the Lord of hosts. What does verse 5 say? Uh -huh. Consider your ways. Oh Look at what you're doing. Look how your focus has changed. And if you don't believe people's focus has changed, now we're so interested in doing our thing. As long as those things that please us well, y'all don't like this kind of preaching. But this is the message that Hagar had to deliver to the people that were returning. And we're returning now, in some sense of the word, back to church and back to doing some things not the same way, but maybe somewhat differently. But it's time now for us to get back to work. But their focus had changed. And he says, consider your ways. Right. You have sown much and bring in little. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Mm -hmm. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe ye, but there is none warm. Mm -hmm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. All right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. God says, I'm trying to get your attention. Yes, We're sir. struggling. We're in this red race of trying to do for ourselves and God's house life waits. Mm. Forget about the church. We're not worried about that. We forget about our foundational teaching. I got to work on me. Mm. And then when I work on me, I'm earning wages mm. to put into a bag with hope. Mm. Isn't that a sad feeling yes, to have sir. work and have a hope? There's nothing worse than to have a hole in your pocket. Amen. Amen. You trying to figure out where did it go? Oh my God. What happened? Who robbed me? Nobody robbed me. Mm -hmm. It went into a bag or yeah. to a pocket that was full with hope. Because we sometimes make 15 verses talks about the disinterest 
the problem that the prophet Hagar had to deal with. They had become disinterested in the house of God. All right. Yeah. How familiar are we dealing with that now? Yeah. Sometimes church is the last thing on our agenda. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah, God. We used to say our lives revolve around the church, but now it's our, our, our the church revolves around our lives. So to speak, whatever way you want to put it, church is the last thing on our agenda. Yeah. But in time past, mother, that was really what we were doing. Our lives was in great uh, ingratiated into the church. Yeah. And we made that our priority. But now that is not the priority of many a person that are named in the name of the Lord. The prophet Hezekiah had the same issue dealing with those returning Jews. Mm -hmm. They went about their own interests and did not consider the house of God. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be for the glorified, said the Lord. Right. He looked for much, and lo, it came to little. Mm. And when ye brought it home, I did loathe it. Right. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because of thine house that is waste, and ye run every man into his own oh my God. house. Uh -huh. Doesn't this scenario sound very familiar? Y'all yes, don't have to agree with it. Yeah. But I see some similarities. Yeah. And what he now facing with that people that now have been traumatized for 70 years. Now coming back home, you would think that the situation would be done the other. God, we thank you. We praise you for bringing us through. Let us see what we can do for you. We're going to rebuild the temple. We're going to rebuild your house. We're going to get back to work and doing what you called us to do in the beginning. We're sorry, Lord, and we realize our transgression that caused us to go into this time of exile. But now that we're back, let us go back to work. But God says, I'm going to blow on it. And why, says the Lord, and of course, you run every man into his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the hands. So God said, I haven't left anything out because y'all don't forget about me. God says, I'm going to do these things and it's going to get you, hopefully get your attention. And then Zerubbabel, the son of Shethel, of Joshua, the son of Joseph, that the high priest with all the remnant, remnant I want y'all to underline remnant. Mm -hmm. All the remnant of the people obey the voice of their God mm -hmm. and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him. And all the people did fear before the Lord. Uh -huh. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message, until the people saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. That's, that's the mercy of God. Yes, sir. Yes. God always mixes mercy with judgment. Uh -huh. Judgment comes, yes, but he sir. always has mercy. Yes, sir. Because God never leaves himself without a remnant. There's always somebody that's going to obey. Uh -huh. But God's word has gone out. And he says, look at the mercy of God. Let me read it again. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work. Tell us about this time to go to work. They came and did work in the house of the Lord God, the host, their God. Mm -hmm. It's time to go to work. The yeah. first problem that they had was that of discouragement. And this happened in the four and twentieth day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king. So the problem that Hagar faced is similar to the problem that you and I as people, God's people, are facing now. The disinterest, they came to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, and after the pandemic, uh oh, not pandemic, but after the exile, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and when opposition rose, they stopped. Yeah. The people then became more concerned with building houses for themselves, or taking uh -huh. care of me, myself, and mine, oh, my so to speak, and the house of God laid waste. Hagar said, Consider, think about what you're doing, All right. consider your ways. They turned from God's house, and we just read it to you in the seventh through the ninth verse. That was the first issue that he had. The second issue, y'all have to say the second problem, is discouragement. Hey, God, the second chapter. And I want y'all to read this in the book in its entirety. 
But here, God, the second chapter, verses 1 through 9, it says, In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Zedekiah, governor of Judah, and to Joseph, Joshua, the son of Joseph, that the high priest, and to the residue or the remnant of the people. God always has somebody that's going to obey. He, does. Yeah. he always has somebody. Everybody's not disobedient. Right. I got so tickled on yesterday. I was talking to the persons, and I said, why the saints always disobedient? Then you tell them to walk over there. Why are they coming over here? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> saints be disobedient. But God always got somebody uh -huh. to obey. Yes. And this person, I said, the priest and the residue of the people. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first Lord? Oh, right. And how do you see it now? Right. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Right. This area of discouragement. Mm. Folk get discouraged quickly. My God. Things do not go their way. They want to quit and give up. The older people in this scenario had seen Solomon's temple yes, sir. and how glorious it was. That's right. And when they were children, they saw it. And they thought that there was no building that could compare with the glory of that former temple. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 3. They, they, had, they got discouraged. They said, what are you feeling? What are you doing? This discouragement of the older people quickly influenced the younger ones until after a while, the work was on hold. My God. Because they said, we're trying to build, but then when we build, the old said, this ain't what, this ain't what it's supposed to be. Y'all gonna give me this morning. Because we've seen the house of God and how glorious it was. And they got discouraged. And the people said, well, we might as well just stop. It seemed like whatever y'all do, we can't please y'all. Okay. Y'all don't hear me right. today. People get discouraged to encourage the people. But we're, he comes again. And brethren, we can't stop. God has been too good to us. And when I think about what God has brought us through, and there are many among us that are survivors, many of us have almost lost our mind. Many of us are now are not even suffering the after effects of what that dreaded disease that had come upon many of us. We're not even having those side effects. Y'all don't hear me today. Amen. So why would I stop now? Why would I give up now? I know what God has done for us. Of the Lord came upon him. Yet now be strong, O Jerubal. Verse 4 said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, the son of Joseph, now, uh -huh. and the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord, and work. There's that word work again. Uh -huh. That's why I say it's time to go back to work. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor it's time to go back to work. Uh -huh. back to work. Recess is over. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's time now to go back to work. The people had returned back to Jerusalem. Yet now, he said, be strong according to the word that I commanded, covenant with you when ye came out of Egypt. Uh -huh. So my spirit remaineth among you. Don't be afraid. All right. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of earth. Mm -hmm. But it takes work. Yes, it does. And I know we say we all, this is a faith generation, and I believe that. But what does James remind us? Faith, faith without, without works is dead. Mm -hmm. We all have, there is always a human element. Could God have raised up that temple just like it was before? Yes, he could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he told their God to tell the people to pull up their sleeves and go to what? Mm -hmm. Go to work. He said, if you go to work, I'll be with you. Yes, sir. I'm going to manifest myself in your life if you just go to work. But it's time. But don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. I'm going to be with you if you just go back to work. Third problem, and I'm just about done. I'm just trying to encourage somebody today. And I know this is not a kick down message, but it's time to go to work. The third problem was dissatisfaction. Hey God, the same chapter verses, chapter 2, verses 10 through 23. I'm not going to read that in its entirety. But in that second term, it says, The glory, verse 9, says, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. So God is encouraging the people that maybe have been dissatisfied and just don't quite measure up to what it used to be, but we've got to do something. We cannot allow ourselves to be relaxed and on recess and do nothing. Uh -huh. right. 
And I really believe this is over that there are a person that really they have no intention on, on really trying to live right. My God. But there are there is a remnant of people that really genuinely is trying to live right. right. And really genuinely is trying to do what the Lord has said. But there are some folks that's in it for the benefit. Right. But God says now it's time to go to work. Right. It's time, it's time to go to work. And just sat for they complain about everything. Hagar had come up with a plan by the leading of the Lord to deal with the immediate problem of dissatisfaction. Uh -huh. And those that were serious about their relationship with the Lord, not just in it for what they can get out of it, but some people have no intentions on doing what God has said. But God always have a remnant. Amen. And I believe that there are many of you listening to me now that's part of God's remnant. You can read the rest of it, the additional videos of the, the people of the remnant. In the fourth and twentieth day, verse 10 of the ninth month, and in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law. And the priest answered and said, No. Uh -huh. Then said Haggai, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any, these shall it be unclean. And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai, and I'm reading kind of fast, and said, so is this people, uh -oh, and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. Oh my God. So we want to make sure that we come, and I thank God that to deliver us, that we come with clean hands. Right. We expect God to do everything for us, and we won't make any of it. I'm saying we, there was a person, there was a segment of folk that are part now that we're dealing with that have no intentions of doing anything. Right. But I say, God, help those that are of the remnant, those that are of the residue that, hey, God said, I can work with this group because they understand what God's intention was for their lives. Uh -huh. Now, I pray, verse 15, and I'm going to close, I pray you consider from this day and upward from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. He caused them to look back and to remember what God had done. Mm -hmm. And I'm admonishing you today that as you look back at where God had brought you from, All right. that it's now time that we go back to work. Uh -huh. And whether you want to know it or not, we are dealing with a very similar issue of Haggai. No, we can't convince everybody that it's time to go back to work, but there is always a remnant. Yes, sir. Yes. God is never without a group of people that really are grateful for his hand in their lives. Yes. That group has not fallen victim to the snares of the enemy and has become victim to the Stockholm Syndrome. That's right. Because the enemy didn't kill him. He said, well, he's not that bad. Mm -hmm. And the devil is not all that y'all making up. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's just as bad and nasty as he always has been. And it's a trick of the enemy that calls us to think that it's not as bad as we say. Yes, he sir. is just as determined to destroy you. Yes, sir. And we ask ourselves oftentimes the question, how do people leave a good situation and go into a bad? How does a girl that's got everything made at the house end up being a prostitute and selling her body to men that really don't love her? Uh -huh. She left that and went to those. But it was a trick of the enemy. Yes, she became hostage yes. to the mindset that they told her, I'm going to take care of you. Uh -huh. And she had it made back in the house. Uh -huh. But she yet was victim to that mindset of the pimp or the person that turned her out. Uh -huh. And I said, she had everything. I just used that as an example. There are many uh -huh. other examples that we can yeah. use that can relate to the situation that now we sometimes don't think is that bad. But really, how would you go from that to here? Uh -huh. Because we have become victim of the mindset that we feel like our enemy has really not treated us that badly. Mm -hmm. And in truth, it's really been told he really has. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We've now come to the understanding that it was not in our best interest to walk away or to relax or to go on recess. Uh -huh. But even if we went on recess and we're standing, Hallelujah, we realize now that we got to go back to work. Oh my God. So what are you going to do, blood wash, Holy Ghost field, and fire right. baptized, child of God? What are you going to do now? All right. That it's time to go back to work. All right. Hallelujah. God has healed your body and given you the job, the position that you asked him for, that you mm -hmm. desire. He delivered you from toxic relationships yes, that's right. that you were in and that were designed to destroy you. Right. What are you going to do now? All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If you want to make a difference before the year is out, All right. tell somebody you got to go to work. Got to go to work.
recess is over. And as we stand before God now, and as we make a self-evaluation of our lives, I'm asking God to help me. Yes, sir. I sat in this chair the other day, and I said, God, what can I do now that I have this situation that I know that we can do better than what we're doing, but when folk get disengaged, how do you re-engage them? Right. Right. How do you get them to want the, what you say that right. you have for us? Right. Because if they don't want it, how are you going to make them want it? Right. I'm asking these types of hard yes, questions, sir. brother. I'm asking, Lord, how do we do this? When you can't really get them, you know, to come and to participate because we're so busy in our sealed houses. Uh, I know. Hey, God had that problem, y'all. Yes, he did. What are we going to do now? And if this generation is experiencing, what about these babies? Oh, That's my right. God. That's What's right. going to happen, Mother Jefferson, to these children mm -hmm. that now have become, now that we as parents, and I'm not saying you, but I'm saying as this generation, that this current that we're living in, if I'm disinterested, where do they come? Right. They have no frame of reference. Amen. They have nothing to aspire for because Amen. after all, we let them do whatever they want to do. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't give me this. Amen. This is it's more serious than you think. Yes, yes, it is. Jesus is soon to come. What are we going to do, blood washed child of God? What are we going to do, those that are filled with the Spirit of God? These people did not have the Spirit of God, but God spoke through the prophet and yes, sent sir. out a warning. I say this oftentimes, I, I refer you back to Jeremiah's situation. If you cannot run with the footman, yes, uh -huh. yes. this is an old book in the scripture. Yes. If you can't run with the footman with this yes. present situation, if you're having difficulty dealing with now, yes, what are you going to do with horses? Yes, when you yes, can't keep up with the footman, how are you going to keep up with horses? So if I now allow myself to fall into the rut, of that syndrome of being held yeah. positive, what am I going to do when showing up tough time comes? Yeah. We're going to be in trouble. Amen. And I'm saying now is the time to prepare ourselves. How do you prepare for hard times? Do you prepare when things are going well? Yes, sir. Because hard times, and they say put up for a rainy day, I guess that whole scenario goes both ways, and we need to prepare now for war. David prepared in a time of peace. Solomon prepared in a time of peace, knowing that war was going to come. Uh -huh. He prepared for his son. David prepared Solomon for the time of peace, and he stored up. And then when war came, they was ready to go to war. Yeah. So now we're not preparing now. We're not making inroads now to embellish our lives and to build up our most holy faith. What are we going to do when the enemy sure enough makes his attack? When he makes his attack upon your home, upon your relationship, upon your children that seem that are seemingly out of control. What are you going to do? You're not praying now. You're not seeking the face of God now. What are you going to do when an emergency comes? You got to prepare now. Hey, God told him to consider your ways. Think about what you're doing. Uh -huh. Is what you're doing right? If it's not right, then you need to change your way. Uh -huh. I don't know who I'm speaking to in particular, but I'm asking you now. I'll be with you. If you would admit your ways uh -huh. and your doing, God promised now it's time to go to work. And if you go to work, I'm with you. Uh -huh. I'm admonishing you now, those of you that have part of that remnant, that you would set your, set your feet to the wheels, so to speak, and now we're ready to go back to the world. Yeah. Recess is over, and I'm asking you to bow your heads and open your hearts. Now that recess is over, God, I'm ready to go back to work. And God, you bless me, you spared me, in spite of all that we've endured during these last three years. But God, you gave me the mindset that I realized that I would not have made it without you. I don't want to take these things for granted, hallelujah. But I thank you for your deliverance. I thank you that you didn't allow the, the enemy to kill me and to wipe me off the map. But we're still here by the grace and the mercy of God. And we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. Lord, let us not let an opportunity pass when we can be a blessing. Let us not let an opportunity pass that we said, no, it doesn't take all of that. Somebody else will do it. Hallelujah. And then, God, you called us. You gave us an assignment. You gave us a job to do. And, God, we don't want to relinquish our job. But we want to do all that you called our hand to do. Bless now, Miss people. Look on that ribbon. Look on that person. That say, Lord, I will obey you. And I'm going to trust you in these last and evil days. God, make the way. Open the doors. 
touch the mind, deliver those that are being held hostage by the spirit of delusion that have overcome, that have taken over a portion of this land. Help us not to fall victim to that spirit, but God help us to be overcomers and to come out more than conquerors. Keep on pressing our way in you, God. We thank you for so doing. This we decree and declare in Jesus' name. And all the people of God say, Amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And that's God wants us to continue to press our way in the spirit of God to pray. But some of us oftentimes have lost that even the mindset to get down to pray. Y'all don't have to agree with that. But the statistics will show that there has been a falling away. And it's not talking about the world. Guess who they're talking about? The saints. Talking about the saints. The world already got their marching orders. And they're led by the, the God of this world. The prince of the power of hell. They're going forth. You don't believe it. Look at our political agenda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Regardless of what you say. So I'm saying, being that he's on his job, yep. and the devil is still working, guess who else got to go to work? Yes, sir. You got to go to work. Come on, let's give them one more. Hallelujah. I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. Yeah. 